Hello, CJ here. Welcome to the first episode of my perfect film collection. Here, I don't want to just do like a, a simple review channel where sometimes I like the movie, sometimes I won't, and I will uh, pour a lot of love or a lot of hatred. This is not my thing. I mean, if you want hatred, maybe don't stay here because this is not what this is about. This is about me sharing with you my favorite movies and today because the, the remake just came out uh, Pet Cemetery. so today I will talk to you about the original Pet Cemetery, the 1989 movie uh, directed by Mary Lambert so let's do this At the beginning we see this family, the Creeds uh, they come from Chicago and they go into, um, the, the, the father has a, a job as a, the high school doctor or something like that. And so they move to this little town in Maine uh, and, and their house is right next to a, a, a road, a very like a highway or something. Anyway, there's some, some very fast trucks uh, whizzing past all the time. Vroom, vroom. And they also have this um, good old neighbor, Judd Crandall. Um, and when, what's particular about this house is one, it's quite remote, uh, except for that one neighbor, and two, it's uh, right next to a pet cemetery, which itself is right next to a uh, Mi'kmaq Indian uh, burial ground. And this is the, the key element. Uh, not so much the pet cemetery itself, but what's, what lies beneath. When you bury beings there, uh, they come back to life, but they come back not quite the same, with a, a, a very strong anger and, and thirst for, uh, let's say, violence and mayhem. The family cat, Church, uh, is killed on that zoom zoom, you know, the big road with the big trucks, and the cat is killed, and the father, who doesn't want his daughter to know what happened to the cat, uh, buries the, the, the cat in the, in the burial ground, uh, and, and obviously the cat comes back very aggressive, very violent, and, and that's pretty much the, all the setting we need about what happens when, again, beings are being buried there. I don't want to spoil anything, but a family member is also taken by that, by that road, by those trucks, and the father, blinded by uh, grief, decides to bury that person in the cursed cemetery or, or something like that and and that family member comes back to life and against like soulless and 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 violent and and because this is a horror movie this is what the story is about like how will the father deal with the return uh of of that beloved person <laughs> it's very difficult not to spoil <laughs> So the father character is kind of bland and, and you sometimes like question his uh, choices and uh, decisions, like why would he do what he does? But I think Dale Midkiff uh, gives a very, very good performance, like very subtle. Uh, some, some say that he uh, overacts. I do not feel that way at all. I think it's uh, like slow uh, descent into madness and, and he does that like very, very well. Another character is uh, the wife, uh, Denise Crosby. She had her uh, hour of glory when she was uh, co-starring along other cast members in the TV series Star Trek The Next Generation. And so she's, I, I believe, mostly famous for that. As, as the mother of the family, she's not the main character, but a strong supporting role. And, and she gives a lot of uh, gravitas to, the, to, to her role, and uh, her character also has some interesting background. He, he has a very difficult part because he's uh, bringing most of the exposure, you know, like he gives the, the information about the burial ground and uh, why he knows about the place, what happens in that place, and, and through dialogue mostly, uh, he gives all those informations like seamlessly and, and it, it's very and he gives a very um, uh, powerful and and deep performance and and you totally believe that this kind of character uh, you know like, kind of like the good old timer uh, exists and he never feels like he's acting it's like he feels so real finally there's also the the son uh, the younger son of the family co uh, played by Miko Hughes and uh, he plays Gage Creed, 
and um, you've seen this cute little face in uh, Kindergarten Cop, uh, Mercury Rising with Bruce Willis, he played an artist little kid and he was also in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Mary Lambert is, I believe, an excellent director. Uh, she did with that um, uh, one of the best Stephen King adaptations, actually. Along with, I would say, Stanley Kubrick with The Shining, and uh, Brian De Palma with Carrie and um, John Carpenter with uh, Christine. You know, it's it's that level of, of uh, Stephen King adaptation. Now, about Mary Lambert, she hasn't made that many movies uh, for the cinema. She's only credited with six movies, I believe, on IMDb. But actually, she's a very prolific director. She's made like a, a ton of MVs and a ton of uh, TV series or, or TV movies with, uh, you know, like uh, Netflix and Amazon and uh, soon to be Apple. Uh, she could hopefully again uh, get to do uh, more movies because this is definitely one director that you want to see more stuff coming from. He's not only the writer of the original novel, he actually also wrote the script adaptation. Uh, for this one and actually it's a very very good script. Is it as good as the book? Of course not. But can it be as good as the book? Of course not as well because a movie is a movie, a book is a book. But I believe that this script still could manage with the, you know, the constraints of, of script writing, of movie writing, it could still keep the layers and the mood and the, you know, the overall Stephen King feel of the story. And a uh, funny little fact, he also plays a small part. There's a funeral in the movie and actually Stephen King plays the, the priest in that funeral and it's kind of like a little, uh, little nod, little wink. What I really like about Mary Lambert's direction is it's, it's a horror movie. There, there's no way around it. But she doesn't direct it as such. I believe she directs the movie as a, as a drama or as a melodrama or as a tragedy. And there are some horrific elements in it, but that's not where her focus is. I believe her focus is on the characters and, uh, and the broken souls, either the father or the mother or even the, the neighbor. It's all about those, those characters who have lost something uh, like, most of most of the time is how they have lost their innocence and and she does a, a very good job at portraying those broken characters and how they struggle to keep themselves full or, or sane or safe and the the moving being what it is how they fail at that but uh it's it's very for me it's like the movie is like near perfect because one, it does deliver the thrills, but it's not like an, a horror movie trying to like scare you every every minute of every second. No, it's it's a much more subtle affair than that, and 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 that's what I like very much about it because when the movie needs to be very efficient, like there is some like the, the way she builds suspense before certain deaths that happen in the movie, the the craft that she displays there is amazing. It's like She's a master. I mean, Mary Lambert is a master director, no doubt about it. For instance, in movie, in horror movies, you, you have the, this thing like called jump scares, where suddenly the the, the you know the, the sound effects and the music is like huh, and it's supposed to make you like jump on your seat. She does that as well, and it's some usually something that is not very well regarded. But the way she does the, those jump scares is very organic. It's very, it's totally part of the story. It. It's not something just to make the audience jump for the sake of making the audience jump. She does that to serve the story, to serve the mood. There is always this like underneath relenting sense of unease more than fear. And, and that is why some people did not respond to this horror movie because it's not so much about the horror, but more about the mood and this uh, feeling of you know, being very uncomfortable. As you can see, it's available on uh, Blu-ray. I believe you can find uh, any uh, secondhand DVD for a very fair price. And it happens to be, as I'm recording this video, 
uh, on Netflix. Actually, one and two are on Netflix when I'm recording this. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, click the little like button. If you want to see more of those, do subscribe to the channel and uh, click on that bell to get notifications. And um, if you like uh, Pet Cemetery, or even if you don't like it, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I will answer those and I will see you next time.